Now let's look at solving quadratics uh, by extracting the square root. And the first thing we have to do is we have to think about um, which problems we're talking about here. And the problems we're talking about here is problems with an x squared term but no x term. And if there's an x squared and an x term, they're going to be a little bit more difficult. But when you have quadratics that just has an x squared term and no x term, it turns out they're fairly easy. So let me show you some examples here. Here's an example of the problem that we're talking about, and we'll do each one of these in turn. If we look at this problem, there's an x squared term, but there's no x term, so that's um, a solving quadratic by extracting a square root problem. Let's look at another problem. 4x minus 3 squared plus 10 is equal to 42. And though that looks more difficult, and you can make it more difficult if you multiply this out, if you think about it, the only place x shows up is, is here, and it's in squared terms. So you're going to be able to solve this using the same method. And finally, if you have a problem that looks like this, x squared plus 6 is equal to 3 minus 2x squared. Even though x squared shows up twice, there's no x's here. So these are the type problems that we're talking about. We're not talking a product problem that looks like this, x squared minus 8x plus 10 is equal to 5. Here we have an x term and we have an x squared term. So this one you're going to have to solve either by using quadratic formula or factoring. And you can find that in the following video. So let's look at these three problems today. So the first problem we're looking at is we have 5x squared plus 18 is equal to 68. So if it's this type of problem, then there's only two steps. The two steps is first you want to isolate the x squared. And then the second thing is you want to solve for x. Usually by taking the square root, sometimes you have to do something else. So the way that I think about it is, is it's almost like you take a red pin and put an, a circle or a square around the x squared, and then you're going to get that by itself. So in this case, we're going to subtract 18 and subtract 18, and we get 5x squared is equal to 50. And then I'm going to divide this side by 5 and this side by 5 and get x squared is equal to 10. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Now when I take the square root of this side, the x and the x squared cancel, and I get x. When I take the square root of this side, I have to add a plus and a minus, so your final answer is x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 10. I have to see if I can simplify square root of 10. I can't, so that's my answer. So what I do here, first I recognize that it's this type of problem. There's an x squared term, but no x term, so then all I have to do is isolate the x squared and then solve for x. Let's do a slightly more difficult problem. This is 4x minus 3 squared plus 10 is equal to 42. You can make this more difficult. You can FOIL this term out and you can solve it using quadratic formula, but if you notice that this is actually a fairly easy problem, the x is inside the squared term and there's no other x um, in the whole problem, so what you're going to be able to do is isolate the squared term So you isolate the square term. In this case, it's not x squared, but it is the square term. And then you're going to solve by taking the roots. Or extracting the roots, sometimes it's called. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. And I get 4x minus 3 squared is equal to 32. The next thing I'm going to do is divide by 4 and divide by 4, and I get x minus 3 squared is equal to 8. Now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. When I do, the squared goes away, and I get plus or minus the square root of 8. Now I should simplify the root. You can do it now or you can do it later. It doesn't matter. Square root of 8, you need to find a perfect square that goes into 8. I think that's 4. That's 4 and 2. And the square root of 4 is 2, so you get 2 root 2. So you get x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 2 root 2. And then I'm simply going to add 3 to both sides. 
If I add 3 here, they cancel, and I add 3 here, I get 3 plus or minus 2 root 2, and that's my final, final answer right there. Let's do one more problem. Let's do 8x squared plus 6 is equal to 3 minus 2x squared. So it's still um, this type of problem because there's, though there's 2x squared, there's no x term here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 2x to both sides. I can do it either place. So I get 10x squared plus 6 is equal to 3. And then I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and I get 10x squared is equal to... I'm sorry, I'm going to subtract 6. My bad, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. 3 minus 6 is going to be minus 3. And then I'm going to divide by 10. So I get minus 3 tenths. I take the square root of both sides, and when I take the square root of both sides, I get plus or minus square root of minus 3 tenths. And I can stop right there. When you get a negative underneath the square root term, your answer is going to be no real solution. Now you can come up with imaginary solutions, and if you there's if you need to, um, there's a video on that. It's solving quadratics with i. But in this case, if there just has to find the real solutions, you just say there's no real solution. And that's how you solve quadratic equations by extracting the square root.